bullet hits the back of my car, they are shooting at me. So if you remember the 63 Buick LeSabre from the Ku Klux Klan story, this is a story about something that happened to that car before then. Now I'm in high school and I'm working at a little pizza place and I think the minimum wage back then was $1.87 an hour or something like that. So to supplement my meager income, I, of course, you know, painted signs and did illustrations and painted the logos on the middle of the football fields and that kind of stuff. But when that work wasn't around, I turned to street racing. Now, street racing is very exciting in the movies. It certainly gets a lot of press these days as well, but it's not a good idea. And here is why. Now, that Buick was not a great quarter mile drag strip car. It had plenty of motor, but it was big and heavy. But where it did well were these sort of like cross county type of races that I was getting into. And I knew a dude from the next town and he knew some guys that were into this. And what they would do is like, you know, they'd leave from, you know, one parking lot and whoever can get to this other parking lot, maybe five, 10 miles away first, you know, there'd be groups of people at each end to kind of you know, declare the winner. That's where that car really shined. Again, I'd been driving since I was eight. I lived, breathed, and ate smoking the Bandit and Dukes of Hazard and the A Team and gone to 60 Seconds and every car chase movie and show and the Cannonball Run and everything else I could get my hands on to. So my brain just. That's just where my brain was. And, and you know, and we never raced through the middle of town. These would be back country roads, usually late at night, and all the farmers are going to sleep, and you might pass a few cars. But for the most part, this just came down to you and how well you could control your car, how brave you were, how little you wanted to use the brakes. We do these races, and they often weren't for much. I mean, we were all out in the country, a bunch of redneck people. We were all broke. You know, $50 was a week's pay, you know, but that was usually $20 or $40, maybe $50. That was a pretty big race haul 30 years ago. So I had kind of gotten into this circle of people that were, you know, on the other side of the county from where I lived, and they were generally older. I mean, I was 16 years old, and these people were oftentimes in their 20s, which, of course, to a teenager, they seem old as hell. I'd love to be in my 20s again now, but at the time, they seemed old, and they were usually, you know, they had a job. They were like a grown-up, and I'm just some dumb kid. We had done one of these races for 50 bucks, and I had won, and, you know, as Things in the country tend to go, you know, the guy got his fragile ego hurt that he had been beaten by this kid. And again, he's probably late 20s, 30 years old with the mullet and the little mustache. And, the, you know, and he was one of those types of guys that he wasn't satisfied that I had won. He wanted to fight me for it. Now, I wasn't especially big kid, but there was one of me and six of them, and I could pretty much see this was not going to go my way. So I said, you know what? Keep the money. You know, I'm not going to fight you over 50 bucks over some race you lost. Well, that wasn't good enough. And he was one of those kind of take your shirt off and fight like a man, you know, takes his gold chain off, put the ego, hands it to his friend. You know, he's ready to fight. And again, there's six of them. This is not going to go well for me. I pretend like I'm going to go take my shirt off, throw it in my car, but I just hop in my car and peel out and haul ass. So they get in their car, car chase ensues. So I'm basically doing exactly the same thing I was doing 20 minutes before, except now I'm being chased by people who want to beat me up. And again, I know the roads. I, you know, they're on one side of the county. I live on the other side of the county. I'm making my way back towards the side of town. I know a little better. And, you know, we were fairly evenly matched cars. They were in a Nova. This has probably been like a... 71, 72 Nova, that kind of SS Nova era. I'm in the Buick. Nova's a lighter car. I had a little more motor. He had a little less weight on these back roads and stuff. That Buick was a lot of car to be skidding and careening around. I'm not really gaining any distance on these guys. Um, I'm actually on the same mountain road that was mentioned in the carjack video when the guys had the claim they had road, they were broken down on the side of the road and tried to jack my truck. It's one mountain. You kind of go up this long straightaway and it just kind of crests the hill. You can see the whole other side of the county and good drop off the other side. And I didn't really get air on it, but I got enough to kind of get a little airborne, feel that little weightlessness in your chest. And, you know, the car settles down again and, and I'm not getting away from these guys. And then I hear this pop, another 
pop maybe a minute later and I'm like, you know, then all of a sudden, bang, bullet hits the back of my car. They are shooting at me. Again, I'm 16 years old. I'm like, oh my God, you know, so I'm, you know, again, driving already as best I could. And as, you know, as I mentioned in the Maverick video, I'm like channeling all my spirit animals, you know, Bo Duke and Bandit Darvel and everybody else. Like, come down and help me get away from these guys. And another couple of shots ring out. I get in this one little straightaway and I hear this explosion right next to me. The bullet is hit, like I found out later, had gone through my tail light, like right down the quarter panel of the car and impacted against the door jam right next to me. And I am terrified. Now, a lot of us did things when we raced our cars back then. You know, we weren't, none of us had any money. It was all ingenuity. So there are little things you would do as an amateur racer. You know, you'd, you know, carry a bottle of bleach in the back to pour out, gonna get your tires hot in a drag race. We do things like on your front end alignment, you'd adjust the toe in in just enough. Cause you know, when you put a car under load, it kind of deflects the front wheels a little bit. And if you've got a perfect alignment, when you launch hard, those wheels spread apart a little bit. It kind of scrubs, takes a little speed off. So you make it a little bit cross-eyed so it straightens out under load. We've done all these little things. But one of those little tricks we had done is to take the wire from your brake light switch under your foot pedal that normally goes, you know, to the brake light sender, to the tail lights. Well, we would route about another six feet of wire up through the dashboard with a little butt clamp, kind of put in there loose. And if you ever needed to turn your headlights off and whip into a driveway or pull into a field or hide or something like that, but still needed the car under power, you didn't want your brake lights to come on. It was mainly for getting away from the police. So anytime, you know, let's say you're going a little fast, you pass a cop and he flips his car around, you'd yank that wire loose, it would disable your brake lights, touch your headlights off, hit the brakes really hard, skid into somebody's driveway, you know, pull in somebody's carport, if they weren't home, whatever, cop goes right past. This seemed like a good time to use that. I knew a road near there. It was a, you know, couple of hills and, you know, these little farm roads. And at some point when the road was being built, some farmer didn't want to give up his field. So the road just makes a 90 degree turn, goes around his field, continues on. And I knew where this was. These guys weren't from my side of the county. We'd gotten that far at that point. So I thought, well, maybe I'll get lucky. And again, you know, I don't want to cause anybody to have a car crash or an accident, but they were shooting at me. So I figure, hey, you've leveled the playing field. So I get a good run of speed, cresting these hills. These guys are, you know, a couple of hundred feet behind me. They're not right on my bumper, but they're close. Um, I hear one more pop from a, and again, it, looking at the bullet hole later, it was just a 22. They were probably just trying to scare me, but I didn't know this at the time. So we get in the next couple of hills and I knew that turn was coming up. So I just reached under there, yanked that wire gave it all the brakes I could with my tail lights are still on, but you know, they just think they're catching up with me. I make the turn. They didn't make the turn. They hit the ditch, rolled that car numerous times. I stopped on the other side of it and, you know, made sure it didn't catch on fire or nothing like that. Drove on, got home, called the sheriff department. We didn't have 911, called the sheriff department, said, Hey, I heard a car crash out on this road. And that was the end of it. But kids don't street race. Kids don't street race, bad things can happen. This time of year, I know a lot of us are trying to clean out our garages and maybe get rid of some things that we probably don't need. So if there's an extra set of wheels and tires sitting over in the corner or an exhaust that you forgot to install or a part you bought two of and forgot about that too, the best place to sell them is on Mod Find. And likewise, if you're trying to find a part, new, used, aftermarket OEM for your car, truck, project, whatever, the best place to shop for those is also on ModFind. ModFind is a free app that you can download in the Android or iOS store, and that will allow you to buy, sell, transact, whatever you wanna do, a car, a part, a tool, anything related to the automotive hobby. It also allows you to create a listing and then add a kickback to incentivize your followers to share it with their followers. They make it very easy to share to all the major social platforms and we'd like to thank them for their support of VinWiki this month. Please go download their app today, buy, sell your parts. A few of mine are already listed there and it's a great platform and I cannot wait to see where they go from here.